All right, so we'll we'll record this um, uh, webinar so that we'll be able to uh, view it later. Okay, eight oh seven. Um, I'm gonna get started. Um, if other people join us later, we'll we'll let them join us a little bit later. So, let's see. again, so welcome to the webinar. This is gonna be on Ozempic from a plastic surgeon's perspective. Um, let's move on. So a little bit about me. My name is Dr. Martin Jungerberg. I am a plastic surgeon. I'm the founder of the Six Surgery Clinic here in Toronto. I am a board certified cosmetic plastic surgeon. I've been doing plastic surgery since 2001 up until now. Uh, 10,000 plus surgeries. Um, we have a clinic in Toronto, in Dubai, Kuwait, and coming soon to Miami. So this presentation is going to be, or this webinar is going to be about um, Ozempic. What is Ozempic? We're going to introduce the topic of Ozempic talk about side effects, the effectiveness, goals and treatments. Uh, we'll tell you about our own experience. We'll talk about Ozempic versus surgery, diet, exercise, and those other things. We have actually a few actual Ozempic patients that come and join us and share their stories with us. And then we'll open the Q&A and you guys can open, ask your questions there. So diet and exercise. Well, 97% 90, of dieters tend to fail and regain everything. Uh, the problem is most people can't really uh, maintain their diet, their lifestyle modifications, and as a result, uh, weight gain, uh, being obese, uh, obesity is becoming an epidemic. Um, I have a picture of uh, Oprah here, a famous person who um, has been pretty open with her struggles with weight gain, weight loss. She's done all the different diets, has lost the weight, gained the weight back, and, and it, it, it's been a struggle for Oprah. This is an actual patient. Um, she has tattoos. You can take a look at her tummy. You can see the tattoos are the same. So um, there's her in one shape on the left and one on the right. And so I'll leave this picture with you for a while. We will talk, we'll get back to this a little bit later. You can look at it and think like, what's going on in here? Is this weight loss? Is this surgery? Is this filters? Is this uh, Photoshop? Um, Moving on to weight loss, a lot of low patients approach us about weight loss and, and people, people come to plastic surgeons asking for weight loss. So plastic surgery is an option for weight loss. I want to make it very, very clear. Plastic surgery is not weight loss surgery. Plastic surgery is something that you do after you've lost the weight. After you've lost the weight, you come to a plastic surgeon to do body contouring. Things like tummy tuck, things like liposuction, they're not meant to reduce your body weight. They're meant to reshape your body ideally after you've lost the weight or if you're already in a, in a great shape yourself. So of course, everybody knows diet and exercise are the best way to do this. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, 97% uh, of patients fail. Um, and if, you know, if this was really easy, we would not have an obesity epidemic all around the world. So when diets fail, people move on to the next best thing. They try weight loss drugs. Unfortunately, in the past, weight loss drugs have failed to achieve any significant results. Next up is bariatric surgery. So bariatric surgery is weight loss surgery, such as gastric bypass. And these have been able to achieve some dramatic, amazing results. Uh, people lose tremendous amount of weight. Now, this is a, a, a very invasive procedure. And so it's, it's reserved for people that are morbidly obese, people who have very high BMI, who really need to lose weight. And it's a matter of life and death for them. So bariatric surgery is reserved for very, very severe cases. But let's go back to drugs. Drugs in the past did not do so well. Well, that has changed. Everybody's heard has heard of Ozempic. You guys are here because you've heard of Ozempic. Ozempic has been a bit of a game changer. Ozempic is a brand name for a medication. Its medical term is semaglutide. Uh, it is a drug that belongs to a class of uh, GLP-1 uh, receptor agonists. These are medications that have been used in the past for diabetic patients to help control their blood sugar. And while they were being used, researchers noticed that these diabetic patients were shedding pounds. And so they've discovered that maybe this also has weight loss implications. Uh, before we move on and talk about the whole thing, I just wanna cover some terminology. Some of you may have done lots of research and know all these terms. Some of you may be new to this and I wanna make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. So semaglutide. Semaglutide is a drug 
that is being marketed uh, as Ozempic. Everybody's heard of Ozempic. There's also the name Vegovi, which is a newer drug, and Rebelsis. A newer one is something called Tirzapatide, which is known as Mojarno or Zebbound. And of course, I mentioned GLP-1, which is glucagon-like peptide one. And this is the key to all of this. So GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide one, it's a hormone that is secreted uh, in your intestinal cells and has been used to treat diabetic patients. However, through research, we found that receptors for this hormone, meaning that this hormone is, has receptor cells elsewhere, is works elsewhere, covers many different areas. Uh, as the diagram shows, it, it uh, receptors are found in the brain, in the heart, uh, and the kidneys, and liver, muscle, bone. So this is a drug that affects many different tissues. And because of its usefulness in, uh, in diabetic patients, uh, drugs have been created based on this. So these are drugs that mimic GLP-1. And from one to seven, these are just some of the names I pulled up, um, different drugs that work on GLP-1. And every time they create a newer version, the newer version seems to be more effective in its effect on diabetics and also in its weight loss. Uh, we'll be talking specifically about number six, semaglutide. And I also want to mention tirzepatide, which is the latest one, and it's a little bit different. So first, let's talk about semaglutide. Again, semaglutide is a medication that was developed to treat diabetes, and it works by mimicking the GLP-1 hormone. It is sold as Ozempic. That's the name everybody knows. Now, Ozempic is the injectable version, and nobody likes to prick themselves, so they've tried to make it better, tried to make it into a pill version, which is the Rebelsis. Great drug. The problem is that it, it's not well absorbed from the stomach. So in order to get comparable effects, you must use a much higher dosage. So people went back to the injectable Ozempic. Ozempic has been around for many, many years, and because of its um, application now for weight loss, the drug maker has developed a new formulation called Vegovi, which is Ozempic, the same drug, but it's specifically marketed for weight loss, and it's a higher dose than the one that's used for diabetic patients. So again, these are different names for exact same thing, slight different variations. Next up, the one's making headlines these days is tirzepatide, also known as Mocharno, which came out recently. And because of its effect on weight loss and all the hoopla on Ozempic, um, the company already came up with a formulation against exact same drug, but it's formulated now specific for weight loss, which is called Zepbound. Now, the difference between this and Ozempic is that Ozempic is a GLP-1 mimic. It, it mimics the form. This one does GLP-1 and GIP, gastric interview polypeptide. Um, and it seems that perhaps it's even more effective than, uh, than Ozempic. So I'm throwing on these terms, GLP-1, GIP-1, uh, different acronyms. The point is these, these hormones act on many different tissues. And if you look at this little diagram, you'll notice that they seem to be working on the same thing. So they work in concert, but probably explains why Mojarnon tirzepatide is more effective than Ozempic or may turn out to be more effective. Now, as I mentioned previously, these medications were used for diabetics. And while they were treating diabetic patients, it was an excellent finding. It was a side effect that they noticed that patients were losing weight. And they noticed that, you know, patients would, look, would lose about 14 pounds in three months, uh, which is about one to two months, uh, pounds uh, per week. And so this was a, a side effect, an anedetic side effect, but a good side effect that allowed this drug to sort of transform and be used for other purposes. So how much weight can you lose on Ozempic? Well, studies have shown that if you take Ozempic, uh, Ozempic injections, specific Ozempic, you can lose up to 15 pounds, 15% uh, 15 of your body weight, which is pretty impressive. It's actually comparable to bariatric surgery. Now, bariatric surgery, everybody knows, and you've seen these dramatic transformations. So to be able to create the dramatic weight loss without the need for surgery is, is pretty groundbreaking. Um, quick little note again, remember plastic surgery is not weight loss surgery, bariatric surgery is weight loss surgery. I'm a plastic surgeon, I'm not a bariatric surgeon, um, so just wanna make that clear, I'm not a weight loss surgeon, but we're talking about weight loss drugs. Now, before I move on to the next slide, we have a picture of uh, Oprah here. Uh, the reason I, I have the picture, everybody knows Oprah, uh, everybody knows how much she's been struggling with her weight, and on top, we have one of the older pictures and then more recent picture on the bottom to the right. 
Um, she hasn't disclosed what exactly she's been doing, but she did say that she's doing a drug for maintenance. So we're all guessing it was epic. Could be something else, could be Monjaro, but she's clearly doing something and it has created a dramatic improvement for her. So good for Oprah. So how does semaglutide of these GLP-1 drugs cause weight, weight loss? Uh, as I showed you previously, uh, the medication affects different body areas, different tissues. They work on the stomach. They slow down gastric emptying. They decrease absorption by the stomach. They also work on the brain to decrease uh, suppressed appetite and cravings. And all of this together leads to decreased intake of calories, provides better control of cravings, and fewer, weaker food cravings. And as, as a result, you can have a tremendous amount of weight loss. 9 to 15% is very, very impressive. Um, this is a, as a diagram I took one of the studies that looked at um, the use of semaglutide, specifically 2.4 milligrams. This is the dosing that's in the semaglutide specifically for weight loss. So Vegovi uses 2.4 milligrams once weekly. And these are, this, was, this was a question I put it to the patient. And you can see the improvements. People felt less hungry, felt fuller, felt less of a desire to eat sweet foods or savory foods. Uh, they felt happy with the way they were. Uh, Food cravings were down, um, cravings for dairy and food overall was down, and they felt like they were in a better control of their food cravings. All of these are amazing because a lot of a lot of the struggles that patients have with weight loss is sticking to a proper diet. Because if it was really that easy, there would be no obesity. And this drug seems to help with that. Uh, so can these drugs be combined with bariatric surgery? Because up until now, bariatric surgery was the thing to do if you want to do dramatic weight loss. So yes, you can. GLP-1 medications can be taken prior to bariatric surgery, and sometimes they are to help bring down the BMI of patients that have morbidly obese, have very, very high BMI. Interestingly, there was a study that looked at this, and in this study, 69% of subjects, 69, that's a big number, lost enough weight while waiting to have their surgery that they withdrew from the, from the surgical wait list. So that, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, also questions I had from other patients was, can you take these drugs after the bariatric surgery? So you've already had weight loss surgery. Can you take these GLP-1 medications to help you lose further weight? And the answer is yes. Studies have shown that after bariatric surgery has given you tremendous weight loss. If you take these medications, you can lose additional 5% of body weight. In addition to weight loss, what I find really impressive is that in addition to weight loss, we, we found that these drugs not only fight obesity, but also obesity-related health problems. There's a decreased risk of cardiac disease and from dying from cardiac events. So heart attacks, cardiovascular accidents, hospitalization for heart failure, all of these things have been improved. Same thing goes for liver health. Um, Non-alcoholic fatty liver is a major problem these days. This medication seems to help it. It improves liver enzymes. So the overall health benefits go beyond just weight loss. It's not just weight loss. Weight loss is, you know, people think it's, it's for the looks. There's health benefits with weight loss. And in addition to health, um, health benefits, there's, of course, the side effects. Everybody wants to know about the side effects. So fact is, side effects do happen. Up to 50% of patients experience some sort of side effect. The most common side effects are digestive. So um, decreased appetite, which is actually a desired side effect, nausea, vomiting, acid reflux, diarrhea, constipation, pancreatic problems. You can have problems with your kidneys, your skin. You can have elevated heart rate and other things. But most commonly, these are digestive problems. Um, these tend to be short-lived. They tend to occur with starting the medication and then whenever the medication uh, dosage is increased. Unfortunately, some patients... Uh, these side effects can be severe uh, to the point that they're unable to continue the treatment. And about 5 to 10% of patients who are taking these medications just find that it's, it's just too much and they, they have to withdraw and, and give up their um, GLP-1 medications. In addition to medical side effects, as a plastic surgeon, uh, I want to talk about cosmetic side effects. Now, weight loss results in reduction of body fat, but it does not cause stretched skin to, uh, to, to, to shrink. Uh, skin stretching that happens during obesity is not reversed by weight loss, and it leaves patients with skin laxity, which no amount of diet and exercise will ever correct. And 
the, these issues though are not ozempic specific. This is what happens anytime you lose weight. So I'll say these are cosmetic side effects of not, not necessarily ozempic, but massive weight loss. Um, so plastic surgery offers weight loss patients body contouring procedures to help them complete the weight loss transformation. You've lost the weight, you're healthier, uh, you feel better, but now you're left with a lot of loose skin. And that's where procedures such as tummy tuck, arm lifts, thigh lifts, butt lifts come in. Uh, patients uh, have uh, lost volume in their breast, deflated saggy breasts. So the breast lifts, breast augmentations are useful. Uh, people tend to get uh, skin laxity on their face. So face lifts and neck lifts and other pre procedures. Um, I'm sure people have heard of the Ozempic face that's making uh, some rounds on social media. It's a sensational term, but really Ozempic face is really a weight loss phase. Um, this is the, the appearance that you would get regardless of what way you've lost the weight, whether it's through bariatric surgery, whether it's through your own diet exercise, or if it's Ozempic, you will have some skin laxity, you will lose some volume in your face. And um, uh, weight gain or plastic surgery is something to, to correct it. So when someone is has signs of uh, uh, weight loss, you can see on the before and after pictures here, this is a patient with a facelift, neck lip. You can see a little sagging skin deflated face. And uh, I think she's here about six or nine months after a facelift. You can see just looks more rejuvenated, lifted, skin looks a little bit tighter. Um, when people lose weight, they lose volume in their breasts. Breasts look deflated. They look saggy. This is a patient with a breast limitation and a breast lift. So we've lifted her breast and added volume to restore her breast volume. And of course, tummy tucks. When people lose weight, typically everybody knows you have lots of loose skin on your tummy. Here's a patient who was overweight prior to surgery. She lost a lot of weight. And there she is after a tummy tuck and a breast limitation, breast lift. Um, you can see uh, skin laxity uh, on the picture on the sort of to the left. And afterwards, one year after, um, weight loss leaves you with skin laxity. Skin that has been overly stretched has lost elasticity, doesn't shrink, looks damaged. And unfortunately, there is no amount of diet exercise that you can do to fix this. There's no creams for this. Only surgical tightening through something like a tummy tuck would help this. Now, going back to cosmetic surgery, um, our goal, the reason why we're here is, uh, or why we've started offering Ozempic to our patients is to help our patients decrease their BMI. We often see patients who wanna undergo cosmetic surgery procedures, but their BMI is too high. In order to have surgery with us, patients must have a BMI below 30. 30 is a cutoff where safety becomes an issue. When your BMI is over 30, risk of complications, infections, um, blood clots, uh, fluid collections, and other things increases significantly. So for our patients, they need to be below 30. And uh, we see patients who are above 30 and we try to help them. So in the past, we would ask them to just leave, um, reuse the weight on their own and then come back when they lost their weight. Well, now with this medication, we're able to help them achieve their goals. Um, I tell my patients, the more weight you lose, the safer the surgery and the better results we can give you. And the reason that that is, is because understand you have internal fat and external fat. Internal fat is the fat inside the abdominal cavity. External fat is this fat underneath the skin. So that we can liposuction and cut out, but fat that's internal, we cannot liposuction, we cannot cut it out. You need to lose it through weight loss. And this is where Ozempic and other drugs like that can help you. Uh, I want to share with you an actual patient of ours who went through uh, weight loss. So this is an actual patient. Um, she started at about 20 pounds. Her BMI was very, very high. So in order to even see us, she went ahead and lost some weight. She brought her that way down to 158 pounds that brought her BMI to 29, so below 30. These are the pictures from her consultation uh, when we saw her. Uh, so BMI below 30, she's good for surgery, but we asked her, you know what? Lose more weight, continue to lose weight. The more weight you lose, again, the safer the surgery and nicer results we can give you. So she continued to lose weight. And between now and this is the day of surgery, she went from 158 pounds to 137 pounds. Her BMI went down from 25 to 29. And now she was ready for surgery. So we did a breast augmentation, breast lift, tummy tuck, lipo, and muscle repair. So this is her on the day of surgery with surgical markings. And here she is several months after. Uh, we performed breast augmentation, breast lift, tummy tuck, to tighten up the abdominal skin, muscle tightening, and a little liposuction just to take away residual fat that she had in her, in her left handles. Um, 
this is a result that would not have been possible had, had she not lost the weight. And this is very important for everybody to understand. Plastic surgery is not weight loss surgery. This patient needed to lose the weight before we could create something like this. So this is a picture I showed you early on. Again, this is when she started her journey. And this is a picture she sent us from the beach, loving her results. To go from left to right is not cosmetic surgery. This is weight loss, significant weight loss before surgery and then cosmetic surgery. And then she continued healthy lifestyle um, and diet and exercise. There's no way I could create this without her losing the weight first. There's no plastic surgeon that could take the patient on the left and create a patient on the right. And that is why I tell my patients, the more weight you lose before cosmetic surgery, the better results we can give you. Um, so let's talk about plastic surgery and Ozempic. Uh, can you take Ozempic before and after plastic surgery? And the answer is yes. You can take it before, you can take it after. However, we ask our patients to please stop it. Now the guidelines are so fluctuating. The latest guidelines are stop it at least one week before surgery. And the reason for this is because I previously mentioned one of the effects of Ozempic or all these GLP-1 drugs is they slow gastric emptying, they slow emptying of your stomach. And so before surgery, you should have an empty stomach. And that's why before surgery, you're always told have nothing to eat eight to 12 hours before surgery. Patients who are on Ozempic and have a slow down, oops, sorry, have a slow down uh, gastric emptying may still have a, a stomach contents inside when they come for surgery and they're at risk of aspiration because when you're lying down and you're completely paralyzed, you can regurgitate food and that can be potentially fatal. So it's absolutely crucial that you have nothing in your stomach. And so if you are on Ozempic and you're going for surgery, make sure that you let your surgeon know you're taking Ozempic and ask them when you should stop it. At our clinic, we're asking our patients to stop one week before surgery. Once the surgery is over, you can go back on it immediately but you need to stop it. And sometimes people are scared because uh, people are scared to stop it because they think if I stop Ozempic, I'm going to regain weight. Well, you will not. Ozempic sticks around your system for quite a while. So stopping for one to two or three weeks is not going to um, cause rebound weight gain. How long should you take Ozempic? Well, in our clinic, our approach, uh, it's about short-term use of Ozempic to help our patients get to the BMI that they should be at for cosmetic surgery. However, for patients that are looking for long-term weight loss, this may be a chronic drug. Um, studies have shown that to sustain a, a prolonged uh, weight gain and prolonged health improvements related to Ozempic, you may need to be on this for a long, long time. How long? Difficult to say. It's still a new drug. It's been around for a few years, but we don't have long-term studies. We don't really know what happens or how long. There, there are no guidelines on how long you should be on Ozempic. Generally, uh, you want to be on it until you reach your goal weight and then maybe scale back a little bit. Uh, you can try to stop and see what happens. So what happens when you stop? Well, there's a study that looked at it and found that uh, one year after stopping Ozempic, uh, patients regained two-thirds of their prior weight and all the improvements in their cardiac and liver status and everything else was reversed. So this suggests that um, this requires ongoing treatment uh, to maximize your weight loss and health improvements. And some people might think this is this is bad or scary. Well, the way I look at it, it's like it's like people with high blood pressure. They own medication for a long time. Diabetics, they own medication for their lifetime. So it, it may be one of those medications um, that you may need to take for a long, long time or maybe for the rest of your life. So who is candidate for weight loss medication? In our clinic, our goal is to help patients lose weight prior to their cosmetic procedures. So to be able to to be uh, prescribed this medication by us, you must be overall healthy. You should not have diabetes, heart, liver, or kidney issues. Uh, you shouldn't have any history of thyroid or pancreatic cancers or issues. Your BMI should be over 25. Uh, we do blood work, so your blood work should be all good. And you should commit to a lifestyle change. Again, this is uh, we are, we're going to be prescribing these medications for uh, short term and the need to maintain the results through lifestyle changes themselves. Um, costs and uh, costs about uh, this. People often want to know how much this costs. So Ozempic is not a cheap drug, especially if you have to take it for a long time, uh, weekly, monthly. Uh, the costs range between $250 and $300 a month and expect that you'll be on this for a long time. 
Uh, at our clinic, we provide a treatment plan, which is $2,000 a month. This includes the medication, uh, dosing adjustments. We do weekly health assessments. We do monthly blood work, and we monitor for potential side effects. Um, we mentioned side effects previously. Um, any side effect, if left untreated for a long time, can become serious. So we want to be able to monitor our patients and manage any potential side effects that may occur. Um, can you treat yourself? Can you just get this drug and just do this all yourself? So we don't recommend it. Uh, and the reason for this is that um, treatment dosages may need to be adjusted, increase or decrease based on how things are going. You should have a professional that you know examines you regularly. You should be monitored regularly. There should be blood work um, to make sure there's no abnormalities. Again, um, this is a powerful drug. We don't really know all its potential effects. And so we should be monitoring all our patients to make sure that they remain healthy. Um, these are contraindications or uh, co reasons why someone should not take this medication. So people that have these specific medical issues, diabetic retinopathy, problems with their eyes, if their blood sugar is very low, if they have a gallbladder dysfunction, if they have problems with their pancreas, uh, kidneys not working well, or if they have medullary thyroid cancer, these are patients that at this time are instructed to not take GLP-1 drugs. So I'm gonna sort of get towards the end of my talk. Um, just to summarize again, Ozempic is this a wonder drug. It, it's, 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 it's pretty impressive. Ozempic and other drugs promise to fight obesity and obesity-related illnesses. Uh, side effects can be overwhelming. overwhelming. Everybody's gonna have some, or more, up to 50% of patients will have some side effects. Most of them are very, very minimal, um, but um, some people may be uh, experiencing excessive side effects. When it comes to safety of this drug, it appears to be safe, but the fact is all, all these studies uh, that have been done on safety have been done on diabetic population. We don't have specific studies yet on weight loss population. Um, these medications, um, again, will, will help lose patients' weight, um, and that may lead to more plastic surgery patients. Uh, as an unintended, unintended side effect. Uh, moving on, I want to share with you uh, some examples of actual real people. Um, patient number one is a lovely lady. Uh, she's 27 years old. She was going to join us um, and share her story. Unfortunately, she's stuck. Uh, her flight got rescheduled and she's flying in the air somewhere. So I'll just share some pictures of her. Uh, she's 27 years old. She went from 160 pounds to 128 pounds. And on Ozempic, and then she continued to lose weight to 115 pounds. Uh, she did stop Ozempic because her side effects were pretty severe. She was feeling nauseous. She was not feeling well, and she decided to stop the medication. However, I asked her, if you regain the weight, would you be willing to go back on the medication? And she wholeheartedly said, yes, yes, I would. The, the, the benefit of it was awesome. Um, some more pictures again. We can go through these. Uh, you can see her at 160 pounds. And then as she was losing her weight, 220 pounds, 224 pounds, and the most recent picture, while she's been off Ozempic, she continued to lose weight and she's down to 115 pounds. Uh, we'll move to our patient number two. This is a, a lady who is 52 years old. She was on Ozempic for two months. It's been two months that she's been on. She started 0.25 milligrams. And she's now on 0.5 milligrams and she's gone from 156 pounds to 145 pounds. So I'm going to get her to join us. Give me a moment. Um, I'll try to figure out how I can do this. And she's going to share with us her story uh, of her weight loss. Um, if I can, let's see. I'm going to ask our patient number two to start her video. I think that's going to make a pop up to the top. So I'll see her. There she is. I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Um, so hello. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for sharing your story with us. So I'll let you take over and tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm, um, I'm 53 years old. 
and um, I have been healthy most of my life. But past three years, I gained extra 30 pounds. And uh, it just uh, became an uphill battle to lose that weight. I tried many different diets and failed. I tried meal plans. I tried uh, exercising. And I was just not able to lose the weight on my own. And it started affecting um, my mood. I felt depressed. And uh, at that point, I decided I needed to go out and get help from a professional. So I consulted with my family doctor and we decided to together that uh, I should give Ozumpak a shot. You mentioned you've tried something before. So what, what types of diets did you try initially? I tried uh, Dr. Bernstein. I tried keto diet. I tried Mediterranean diet. I went and got meal plans for three months. Um, I will lose two, three pounds and then gain back five pounds. And it was just sort of a yo-yo effect. And any thoughts of why you think those diets failed? Um, I think diets don't work. I don't think they work. Uh, they're great, but you know, as we mentioned earlier, ninety-seven yeah. percent of patients tend tend to tend to sort of bounce back, unfortunately. So yeah. Let's, let's talk about your Ozempic. How long have you been on Ozempic? Just for two months. Two months. Okay. And you yeah. lost um, it was about over ten pounds. Over ten pounds. 10 pounds. So five yes. pounds a month. Awesome. And yeah. You, you started at 0.25 and then you moved on to 0.5 milligrams. That's it. The plan was that I would do 0.25 for one month and uh, my doctor would monitor for any side effects because I was really scared to try a, a new drug. So we decided we're going to monitor and if something goes wrong and I'm not feeling good, then I'll, I would just get off it. So how was your experience with the drug? How, were the, did, how, how did you feel taking this medication? Um... Initially, I I felt nauseous for about two weeks. How, and how uh, bad was the nausea? It wasn't it it wasn't too bad, but I'm a sensitive person, so I just I, I felt it. Um but it got better. Okay. And then after after four weeks, I changed the dose to 0. 0.5. Then I felt a bit nauseous again for about a week. But now I, I don't feel anything, any nauseous or any headache or any other side effects. Um, when you increased your dose from 0.25 to 0.5, did you get side effects again? Did you feel nauseous again? I did. I did How for long? about a week. For about a week. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you feel on it? How, how are your cravings? Because one, one of the things that people struggle with is cravings, food. How, have you noticed a change in your food, in, in, in how you approach food, how you think about food, how you take food? You no, know, it's, um, I don't have cravings. I don't think about food. I eat when I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. And it's great because the cravings are gone. A craving is what gets you, right? And uh, I can, I, like, you know, still have a habit of making a full plate. But when I'm full, like, I don't want to have that, that, extra food so I, i'm eating everything mm -hmm. but a smaller portion and uh and not not any cravings at all how and i feel more, great that i lost 11 pounds how much more weight do you want to lose uh my goal altogether is to lose 30 pounds and what happens after that um healthy lifestyle exercise so will you stop taking Ozempic? My plan is to get off Ozempic uh, uh, slowly with 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 my uh, with the help of my physician. Okay. So I would go to 0.25 and wean myself off. Okay, awesome. All right, thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming on and sharing. Oh, your thank story. you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, I'll move. Um, I skip to the next slide. Let me go back. 
Yeah. We have another pa a patient, uh, missing a slide for us. Um, we have a patient number three. Um, if you can um, turn on your camera, so you pop up to the top. Oh, there you are. Oh, uh, no. Oh, there we go. I see you there. I think I should. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So I'll let you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell us uh, what's going on with you. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Fatuma. I'm 35 years old. I uh, recently just had my second child, <laughs> 16 months. So I've been very busy in my motherhood life. <laughs> and uh, what happened with your weight loss, weight gain? So um, I, uh, for the last five years, I've been having children. Uh, so I had a loss before I had my daughter. At, uh, and so due to the loss, I gained a lot of weight um, due to grief. And um, so, and then I started to have kids. And then once I was done, it was a lot of weight that I had put on. Um, so at that time, I started to um, try different options. I tried uh, in Mississauga, there's a clinic called Dr. Poons. I went to that. I also went through a, a bariatric program um, where I was on the shakes. Um, and even though I did lose a little bit of weight with that, I was never able to keep it off. And it was really hard, you know, to drink th shakes for three months straight was really difficult. So uh, then I turned to Ozempic because I had heard a lot of people um, saying really good things about it. So I had uh, turned to my family doctor and uh, um, my da doctor, uh, uh, he referred me to a weight loss doctor mm -hmm. and then they recommended it to me. And um, yeah, so it's been really great. I've been on it for uh, about three months um and i've lost i've i mean my overall weight loss i've i've lost over 50 pounds congratulations um, Thank you. um let me just see if i can adjust the presentation because i want to find your um slides there you are let's get back there we have you perfect so you went from 320 to 250 pounds amazing mm -hmm. and you guys can can you guys see that Yes. Can you see it, Fatima? Can you see the? Uh, <laughs> I can see. Beautiful. So, uh, let me ask you a couple more questions. So, I'm curious. Um, did you have any side effects? Any problems with taking Ozempic? So yeah. So I, uh, I'm somebody who's really nauseous to begin with. So when I first started taking it, um, I also was on the 0.25. So I started off that. I actually asked to be on 0.25 a little bit longer just to get my body ready. Um, and then after about a month, I went to the 0.5. Okay. Um, when you were switching doses, did you notice any side effects or any flare up of side effects? Uh, yeah. So again, um, the same thing kind of at the beginning when I had taken it, the nausea had returned. Um, I mean, anyone who's been pregnant, it's it's basically like a little bit like that. So, um, but it went down after, I think about a week or two, I was no longer the nausea, unless I, you ate really bad, mm -hmm. you were feeling bad. What were your cravings like or, or your approach to food? Did you notice a change in your hunger and, and cravings? I did. So um, I usually I crave foods. Um, so uh, sometimes at the beginning, what was happening is my body and my mind were still craving these foods. And then I thought, OK, I'm going to eat it. And then I would eat it. And then I wouldn't feel so good. My body was almost rejecting it. What, so you, it, not good. you mean you mean nauseous or what, what did you feel? Just nauseous. Yeah, just like nauseous. But then eventually I stopped craving it like my body. I haven't craved fast food in at least two months. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Um, the, the way this medication works is on the digestive system. It slows down absorption movement of uh, nutrients to your system and also on the brain. 
of like cravings and hunger. So different pathways lead to weight loss. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so thank much. You. All right. I'll let you turn off your camera. We'll you mute. We'll go back to the presentation. So now comes the uh, the fun part, uh, the Q and A. Um, I'm going to ask you guys. You can submit your questions in the chat. Uh, if this is a private question, you don't want me to answer uh, here publicly. You can always send us an email. Email us at infotrontosurgery.com, and we will send you answers to your questions. Uh, again, uh, I, I'll give you sort of generic answers. Uh, this is not meant to be specific medical advice. If you need specific medical advice, you need to be seen in person, have a proper assessment and have a proper consultation. And it's best, you, know, you, sh you should be seen and assessed by a, by a qualified medical professional. So I'm gonna go to the chat and you guys should be able to see it there. You can write your question. I'm gonna scroll through these and see what questions we have here. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, and again, if you, are if you are shy, if you have a very private question, just send us an email. Hello, Costa Rica. Okay. Hello, Rosanna. Uh, so a question is, where do you get Ozempic? Um, so for Canadian patients, uh, uh, you can speak to your family doctor. Uh, they can start you on this. You can go to a weight loss clinic, or you can come to a clinic such as ours. Uh, to, to be assessed, to make sure that you're a good candidate, that you're healthy, that you qualify, and that this can be prescribed. Uh, is it for life? Um, to be honest, I don't have the answer to that. It may be. It may be according to medication, like I said, like for diabetics that take the diabetic medication for life, like hypertensive patients take the hypertensive medication for life. Um, there's a chance that you may need to be on this for life. There's also a chance that this medication may help to kickstart your weight loss, you may reach your, your uh, desired weight, your goals, and then lifestyle modifications. So a good healthy diet, good exercise, good lifestyle is gonna be able to maintain your weight results. Uh, and, if, and if it fails, you can always go back and start uh, the medication. Any issues with medication shortages? So yes, um, because it became so super popular, it's just exploding all over the world. Uh, people are using it for diabetes. People are using it for weight loss. And as such, there are shortages. Um, it varies in different areas. Uh, in the States, for example, uh, you can get around it. The shortage is in the not in the medication itself, but in the delivery system. So the medication, the, 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 the raw material that's required for this can be obtained by pharmacies, compounding pharmacies that can create um, sort of alternatives. This is, this is legal in the States. There is a law that allows pharmacies to create alternatives when there's a shortage. Uh, there's no such thing in Canada that I'm aware of. So in Canada, patients may uh, struggle with shortages. Now there's other drugs coming out such as Monjarno or um, Zepbound, uh, but because they're also popular, there may be a shortage of those med medications as well. How often do you take injections? And what about when traveling? So this is a once a week injection, current ones. Uh, there is a pill form for Ozempic called Rebelsis, so you take that daily, uh, and there may be different variations coming in the future. But right now, the most common way of taking this medication is a once a week injection. It's a pen. Uh, I, I'll let's see if I can scroll. I'll scroll up here. There we go. So that's a there, there is a pen. So you can see the Ozempic pen. It comes with little little needles, very, very fine needles. You stab yourself, you poke yourself, and um, and um, this pen carries quite a lot of medication in it. So you can take this with you if you travel and self-administer these injections uh, while you're away. Other studies on long-term side effects, organ damage, negative impacts that we should come be concerned about. So there are studies. These studies, however, are on diabetic patients. Um, as of last week, I was doing my lit review. Uh, I'm not aware of any study in weight loss patients specifically. Uh, so although it seems to be safe in diabetic patients, uh, I can't tell you specifically it's safe in weight loss patients. It seems to be. All the studies so far seem to indicate so, but um, there's no definite study yet. 
there are certain contraindications, which I mentioned previously. I'll, sl I'll s jump over to that slide. So these are specific contraindications. So if you have one of these conditions, you should not be taking this medication because the medication can make things worse. If you look on the bottom right, there's medullary thyroid cancer. So this is a big one that people talk about. It. Oh my God, you can get cancer from Ozempic. So this comes from a lab a rat studies. Uh, there was a very recent study actually came out in October of 2023 that looked at, I think, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I think like 45,000 patients, or 45 or 75,000 patients, a very, very large number. And they looked specifically at incidence of cancer and they found none. They found no increased incidence of cancer in these patients. So even though at the moment we still say uh, patients with history or personal or family history of thyroid cancer should not be on this medication, it seems like cancer may not be something to worry about. Um, uh, follower from uh, Sudbury, zero Ozan back in town. Uh, Toronto, I, I, I can't speak for pharmacies. I know we can still get it, it's a, it's, it is a struggle. Um, but yes, and you switch to Monjorno, perfect. It's it's an alternative. Monjorno is a newer drug, and actually, because it does not just GLP one but also GIP, that may be the reason why it actually may be even more powerful. I mentioned that with Ozempic studies show that you could lose up to fifteen percent of your body weight. With Monjorno uh, studies have shown up to twenty percent, so it may be more powerful. So that may be a good thing. Um, <clears throat> A question about the first girl's weight loss. Um, or the, the young lady. So this was a, a, a healthy young lady who was you know, in a pretty good shape but wanted to lose some weight. She went on Ozempic. Um, she did develop side effects, nausea, vomiting, um, to the point that she stopped. Um, but even after stopping, she continued to lose the weight. And I asked her, you know, um, given, given that this happened, you stopped. If you regain the weight, would you go back on a medication? And she said, yes, she would go back and do it again. So uh, it was, you know, the side effect was to the point that she was happy with her weight loss and decided to stop it, but it wasn't something that would prevent her from doing it again. Uh, can someone be about 25 or below go on a Zempic? Um, someone is stuck. Uh, you can, it is possible. Uh, at our clinic, we do have the 25 cutoff, but there's no specific cutoff. I guess if your BMI is below 18, then maybe you should definitely not be doing this. But if you're over 25 or so um, and you still want to lose weight, um, maybe a short-term course of Ozempic or GLP-1 medications could be beneficial to help you achieve your goal. Uh, next question, does it work on everyone? No. Well, yes and no. It, it works but to a different degree to the point and some people it may have very minimal weight loss effects. Um, so you say you have two girlfriends that had amazing results, 15 that had zero results. Again, difficult to say about, you know, we, we, I don't know who these people are. Uh, some people may not have been able to tolerate it, may have very, very minimal results, difficult to say. People complain of double weight gain when they get off. Uh, well, studies that I've looked at show that people regain about two thirds. Uh, there's the odd report of somebody double gaining, but these are these are the rare rare cases. This is not a typical uh, rebound that you would get when you stop the medication. What dosage do you guys do for surgery? So there's no dosage for surgery. Uh, it's more dosage for weight loss. You start basically at 0.25 and work your way up. Although this is the old protocol uh, with Ozempic. Uh, the semaglutide that's specifically for weight loss comes prepackaged already at 2.4 mm, uh, milligrams. So you jump directly to that. Now we haven't used the 2.4 milligram. We're still using Ozempic and slowly working it way up. And the goal is get to the dosage that you're comfortable, that you don't have side effects or have minimal side effects that you can tolerate and that allow you to lose weight. Can you take this if you have a thyroid nodule? Um, as I said, there's a study that looked at cancer and found no association, but at the moment still, because of the fact that the official guidelines are anybody with thyroid issues should not be taken, I would say avoid it, don't take it yet. Um, our staff was telling patients to be uh, off for four weeks, yes. 
Uh, that was the guideline up until very recently. Uh, and we've adjusted the guideline to one week. Uh, the guideline is uh, based on the, these guidelines are based on the fact that in Canada, there were reports in Quebec of patients who were on Zempic for quite a while were having general anesthesia and regurgitated food. And this is potentially dangerous, as I mentioned. So uh, the official guidelines came out and said you should be off for four weeks. Uh, and again, this is a, this is an always evolving situation. The guidelines have recently changed to to one week, although our anesthetists are not hundred percent sure they're they're happy with it. Um, but for now, we've changed from telling our patients four weeks to one week. And and again, I apologize if you're so in between. Uh, it's an ever evolving field. Um, I have a patient who says since on uh, since August lost twenty pounds. Most interestingly, it wiped out any interest in alcohol. So yes, uh, that is one of the side effects is that not only is it about food, it's also about alcohol. Uh, people have less cravings for alcohol intake. Uh, is it okay if you have no gallbladder? Yeah, we're not affecting your gallbladder. Monjano is on back order. Yes, it is. Uh, these drugs are very popular. Uh, they, I don't want to say, the, the, yeah, I don't, I don't want to use the term wonder drugs, but they seem to be doing amazing things. Uh, and so they're they're being very, very popular. Uh, will lemons and apple cider cause impact on how Zempic works? Um, I have no idea. Um, they shouldn't because whatever is inside your stomach is not affecting the fact that these medications are being injected simultaneously. They affect your stomach motility and absorption. Uh, so although I, 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 don't, I can't say I can... I can't say for sure. Uh, I don't believe that should be any effects. All right, you guys, it's uh, it's almost nine o'clock. I have a feeling that our uh, webinar will cut us off at one hour. I'm gonna refer to my technical support. Uh, are we gonna be cut off at one hour or are we going to go on for a few more questions? Where's my assistant? Uh, we'll try to keep this going. In case we get cut off, guys, I want to say preemptively, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, and uh, my my assistant here, my my technical support, um, what do we do? Are we able to go on? Or should I say thank you and conclude? I'll try to go on. All right, I'm gonna pull up some more questions. Um, if you guys follow us on social media, uh, I'm guessing that's probably where you found us. Uh, Real Doctor Six, I posted uh, a post that asked people to submit questions. I'm gonna pull up those questions that people submitted over there. Give me a moment here. And again, if for some reason this kind of cuts us off, uh, please email us info at torontosurgery.com and we'll answer all your questions. Okay, uh, these questions. Oh, I found them. Okay. Um, someone mentioned that they used Ozempic for six months prior to surgery, that was 30 pounds in, and still working. Amazing. Should you lower your dose if you're trying to maintain? Uh, so I think, yes, you can try to lower your dose um and and see if you're able to maintain your weight and potentially wean yourself off and see what happens um there's a question about injection taken once a month or once a week it's once uh, once a week i hope i didn't say once a month it's it's a once a week injection um question is is this age restricted um there is no official age restriction I'm aware of. However, at our clinic, uh, you gotta be 18 and over to take this. Um, is this for life or can you wean it off after weight loss? So again, same same question. Uh, you can try to wean off, you can try to minimize it. And once you reach your goal weight, maintain the goal weight through lifestyle modification. So healthy diet um, and exercise. All those studies do show that uh, once you've stopped this, you may gain the weight back you no longer take the medication. So the, uh, the the impact on the brain, on the way your brain works uh, is dimish, diminished and you may develop cravings again and you may have to fight cravings. And that's, that's one of the biggest issues with weight loss 
weight gain and the yo-yo diets is that people struggle with with cravings and and that's why one of the beautiful things of this medication it doesn't only work on your gut but also works on your brain and fights these cravings um uh, there's a question about how do we sign up for these plans so for ours uh please contact us again the email is info at torontosearch.com i'll go to the back there it is there's the the email send us an email we'll get you to come in for a consultation we'll assess you we'll send you for some blood work to make sure you're a good candidate and then we'll start you on the plan the plan does require you to participate it's not just us prescribing uh, the medication you do need to come into our clinic and to be seen regularly and then blood work uh, once a month um question about what follow-up tests are done while you're on the medication so we we see you in person we do assessments uh when we see you and then once a month we send you for blood work and again we want to make sure that uh, that your blood work is um, not changing it's staying all in healthy ranges uh, and we want to see improvements if you have any abnormal blood work uh, question is what can you do to complement one milligram dosage of ozempic uh, i'm not sure i understand the question i guess what more can you do well what you can do is you can increase the dosage. The weight loss dosage that's officially coming from Ozempic or Regovi is 2.4 milligrams. All right. I think that's all the questions. Uh, let's see. Question, uh, there's a question about Mujarno or Ozempic. So uh, I'll go back to uh, a slide on that. So Ozempic and most of these GLP-1 receptor agonist medications work on the GLP-1. Mujarno is different in that it works on GLP-1 and the GIP. And as you can see, again, they work in, in a similar fashion. They may work, be working together. And that may be a reason why initial studies seem to indicate that Mujarno is actually more effective and may be more effective in, in weight loss. Uh, its safety profile, we don't know it. It is a more, it is a new medication, hasn't been around as long as as Ozempic, um, but it seems to be working in a similar fashion. So we're making the assumption that it's similarly safe, but we don't know until actual studies come back. Um, there's a question about side effects again. So. You know, I presented this drug as almost a wonder drug. And again, I don't want to use the term wonder drug. I'm not trying to sell this drug as, as this miracle, but it does have effects beyond weight loss, which I think are impressive. And I don't know whether this is the drug making your heart and liver and everything else better, or these are byproducts of weight loss. Because we know obesity is not a health thing. Despite all this thing about body positivity, positivity and people like uh, Lizzo promoting very large bodies, truth is, this is not normal, this is not healthy. Being obese is known to decrease life expectancy, increase cardiovascular disease and all kinds of other illnesses and weight loss is a good thing. So again, I don't know whether all these other additional things are byproducts of weight loss or if the medication itself is making your heart, your liver and organs better, but it seems to be doing a great job. So that that's that's amazing, you know, this is beyond weight loss. This is not just weight loss, this is about health. I think I've went through all the questions. The rest is sort of repetitive. A lot of people asking the similar questions. Um, is there anything else you guys want me to talk about? Any any other questions that you have? If you do, please put them in the chat. Uh, if you want to submit a private question, uh, you don't want me to talk about it here. Private, you want to do it privately. Email us again. Email down here info at torontosearch.com, and I'll be happy to answer. And again, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it very useful, helpful. Um, and thank you. Guys, have a great night.